I'll say some things on the tip once today. Uh, she can. We're, we're not really going to tell you our story right now. Um, uh, I think a lot of people know it, and if you don't know it, we'd be happy to talk about it with you. Um, we've tried to be pretty open as we uh, win. So uh, I think that, again, I don't want to repeat that part, but really briefly, uh, we've been married a little over 10 years now, and we've been uh, trying to have a baby for about seven to eight of those years. And uh, it's been it's been a really long journey and a really uh, interesting one. Uh, so you know, good and bad, and, and um, yeah, a, a really good journey. But um, yeah, so we'd be happy to share that with you if you haven't heard it, so you can ask us. But I think I want to share a little bit about kind of um, how we've been feeling since having Zoa, and um, and just kind of the impact and, and some of the things that we've uh, felt because of it. So. Um, a few things. First, uh, so I, I was born and grew up in this church, so I've been in this church for 37 years now. And, uh, and so I'd say that I felt pretty much the depth of uh, fellowship from here and, and the community and the feeling of the church. And so as I've been, you know, I, I love growing up here and I, I love my family here. And um, I've been well taken care of here, for sure. Um, definitely through all the different aspects of the church. And um, uh, I guess in parallel, I, I'm kind of, I'll, I'll be jumping a little bit, but uh, uh, my family's gone on a uh, week-long vacation pretty much every year since I think I was like two. So, so, so many, many years for that too. And uh, as the first uh, of my generation, I guess, um, I was well taken care of there as well. So I always was very well uh, loved by my family, and so uh, and so you know it's a really wonderful trip. We just came back yesterday from it, and I would say that from this particular one, I was perhaps more well loved this week than uh, than any other time. Although truthfully, it was well was loved, but I will accept that as being me loved. And um, and so yeah, she was very she was doted on greatly. Again, as the first of a generation, and um, and so I would never have said before that I was not loved by my. Um, but from this week, it was like experiencing a, a, di a different thing, a new, it's like experiencing love again in a different way. Uh, and it was more, I guess, more full. Um, and, and then in the same way, uh, you know, having been here at church for 37 years, I would never say I was not well loved by the church. But uh, since going through this and even through the whole process of surrogacy and then after she was born and then being here, it's like being loved in a different way. Uh, and feeling community in a different way, and an, an almost more full. Uh, and not that it was not love before, uh, just that, um, yeah, it was more, more complete in many ways. And, and uh, just experiencing it in a way I couldn't describe. And, um, and I know that, uh, sorry, I know that uh, lots and lots of people have had kids and have felt these other things, but we'll, I'll just act as if it was unique to me in some way. But, um, and, and so also, you know, it's interesting that it's today, uh, because today is the day that people are going off, the staff's already there, but the kids are going off to youth camp. And this is the first time in 26 years I will not be going to camp when I had a chance. And I really felt, so I knew obviously that would happen at some point, and uh, I was very much dreading it, and I was very much feeling like, that I, I felt pretty bad and, and sad. But the truth is that like, you know, there's a, a very good reason and, uh, and it's right. And it's just, again, a, a changing in the way uh, I experience community and the way that it works. And you know, obviously I'll be kind of kind of sad that missing David there. Um, but, uh, but definitely, um, I've, I've been blessed a lot. And, and uh, one last thing I want to share is just that, um, and I know it's not in any way um, related, really, but I was thinking a lot about Abraham and Sarah and how long it took them to have one. How a child, how it's God's timing, and and I will say that in one way I'm really sad about the way the timing has worked out, and that's simply that um, I really wish that Zoa had been born um, while my grandparents, while James and Marie were were still here, and I know that my Lulu in particular would have uh, loved to see the way that that came to pass, just because of how much he gave here at SCBC and how much he loved it, and how much he wanted for us as well. Um, but I know that. He, he is loving on us just as much right now, and um, 
so happy for us too. And feeling that, again, that sort of, I don't know if legacy is the right word, but just the fact that, you know, uh, the generations have come down here, starting with him at this church, and, and knowing so many people who, but you know, honestly, there's a lot of people who are at this church who I kind of know, but only kind of know, but they love on her so much just because of the way that, um, honestly, James loved on the church so much. It's weird to say it. Go, go. I'll take it. I can't say James. Um, <laughs> I loved on the church so much and how uh, he wanted this uh, for us and for uh, and for the life of the church, I think. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're really grateful. I'm really grateful. And um, just so very blessed. <laughs> okay, I know we're past our five minutes, so if you want to cut me off, just give me a cue. Um, I just want to sh add to that that um, having Zoelle has been such a gift. And, you know, people would ask me how I felt before she was born, and most of the time I would say, I don't really feel like it's happening because, you know, I didn't carry her. And so I didn't get to feel a lot of the pregnancy joys that mothers get to feel. And one of my big concerns was that I wasn't sure I would bond with her that well or that she would know I was her mother. And so I had a lot of fears, but now, I mean, none of that really matters. I feel like in the first week we bonded really well. Not as well as she and Kyle did the first three days, but I'm pretty sure that skin-to-skin -skin contact did help at the hospital. Um, but I would just say that God has stretched me more than I would ever imagine. I shared a little bit when I went to Thailand that that was a hurdle for me because of the whole germaphobe OCD-ness that I have. and. Um, that kind of translates to having a kid because now I'm worried for her and all the germs and people wanting to touch her and hold her and it's just like, ah! <laughs> so I just ask in advance that you forgive me if I am a little bit weird with that. Um, but trust me, I'm trying to let go a lot. And, you know, I'm just thinking about one of these arguments that Kyle and I had the other day. Um, another way that God really spoke to me. She was li she was literally sandwiched between me and Kyle. We were sitting on the couch, and she's sitting in her little boppy, which is like a giant pillow with a hole in the middle. And we were arguing, and she was turning her head and looking at each of us as we took our turn to, to fight. <laughs> and I just stopped, and I looked at her, and I was like, tears were running down my eyes, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, we're arguing about who's doing more work to take care of her. <laughs> and how many years were we praying for her? And uh, God just kind of kicked me and was just like, you know what, that's pretty, pretty crazy. And I felt so ashamed. I just looked at her and I was like, I'm so sorry, baby, <laughs> forgive me. And then I immediately apologized to Kyle and told him how selfish I was. And the thing is, if you knew me the way I was before she was here, I mean, if I fought with Kyle, I would ignore him for a day, pretty much not talk to him, and just be stubborn about it. But this was definitely God's work, because that's not me who would relent so quickly. And it was just another reminder that God is working in our in our life and in ways we would never imagine. And so I'm just truly grateful for all of you. You know, having Zoel was not just for me and Kyle. It's a reminder that Zoel is a gift for everybody in this world. And I need to share her. We all need to share her. And um, just let God work the way he wants to work in her life. So thank you. I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward to receive the offering. And if you would please.